Good morning. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you for the presentation. Great being here. Actually, I've been here before, but not on stage, so it's exciting. TED is about spreading ideas. And when they asked me what topic am, am I going to speak about, I said, let's try marriage. I said, these are young kids, they're not married yet. That's why we want to speak about marriage. I want to spread some ideas about marriage, and I hope somewhere along down the road, maybe some of these ideas are going to be useful. We'll make a change. About spreading ideas, he once asked a man that just got married a year before, they asked him, tell me, did life change after marriage? He said, actually, almost all the same, small changes. So what changed? He said, well, when we were dating, I was doing the talking, she was listening. We got engaged, or then she was doing the talking, and I was listening. When we got married, we both do the talking, and our neighbors listen. So no big changes, just the question is, who's going to listen to our ideas? So I'm here to try to give you some ideas about how to make our marriage, your marriage, hopefully, in the future, a happy one. Everybody wants a happy marriage. Everybody wants to be happy. Now the question is, how do you become happy? So I remember when I was young, there was a line, don't worry, be happy. And there's a lot of depth in these words. Don't worry, be happy. What is happiness? Some people think that happiness is, uh, no, when I finally get the car I want, when I finally get the iPhone I want, when I finally, my expectations are met, my dreams are finally realized, and what I dreamt for I got, that's when I'm going to be happy. The truth is that it's much, much more complicated than that. You buy a new car, you buy a new gadget, you get what you want, and a week later, two weeks later, it's all over. A month later, if you're lucky. And then you want something else, and then you want something more, and then you want something bigger. And the truth is that happiness doesn't come from having something, from receiving something, even from achieving something. What does happiness come from? It's a state of mind. It's really me who decides, am I going to be happy or not? I'm going to be the one deciding when I wake up in the morning, am I going to wake up on the right foot or on the left foot? I can decide and I can make my life a happy one if I decide that I'm going to be happy. They say that there were people in concentration camps who were suffering terribly, but still they were able to thank God for every day of their life. And there have been people which have had a life of bliss, everything they wanted, and they haven't been happy. Why? Because really the person himself decides, is it going to be happy? Is it going to be a happy day? Or today I'm going to be grouchy. And the way you look at things, that's the way things are going to be. There was a very famous rabbi who lived actually here in Russia, Tzemach Tzedek, and he had a great line for anybody that came to him with a problem. It's in Yiddish, but he can translate it easily into German. I'm sure you're going to get the idea. Tracht gut, wet sein gut. If you're going to think that it's going to be okay, if you're going to think that you're going to be, it's going to be good, that's the way it's going to be. It's really up to you to decide what's going to happen. God is really like a shade of a person. If a person is happy, God is going to send him happiness. If a person is happy, he brings down an energy into the room. I heard, get excited. It's all about what you're going to do, how you're going to act, how you're going to perceive the world, and what you're going to tell the world. So if you smile, if you're happy, if you're positive, if you're optimistic, the world around you is going to be happy. But even more than that, 
your life is going to change for the better. And there was once a rabbi who met a young couple, and they told him, listen, you are wise, you are married for many years, tell us, what is the secret of marriage? And he said, one line, whatever happens in your life, be happy. Always thank God, your spouse, for what you have, for what you have gotten. And if you're happy, and if you have this happy attitude, your marriage is going to be bliss. So it really depends on us. What are we going to look for? What are we focusing our attention on? For the good things or the bad things? Somebody could wake up in the morning and look for something that went wrong, and his whole day is going to be bad. And somebody else can wake up in the morning and say, wow, look how much good I have. Look how much good is there in my life, in my family, in my school, my friends. And his day is going to be good, and he's going to bring goodness to the world. There is a missing tile syndrome. I'm, I'm not sure you know about it, but it's very simple. A person walks in the room, and they tell him, what do you see? Or they show him a picture. What he's going to see is the missing tile. doesn't make a difference if there are beautiful tiles all around. There's a beautiful picture. If there's something missing, that's what is going to focus his attention. And that's where we have to make our switch. We have to realize that our life is about looking for the good things. Realizing what is good, and if we're going to focus our attention on what is really good for us, what is the good that is happening by us, the happy things that are in our life, then around us we're going to bring out happiness, and if there's going to be happiness, there's going to be love. There was once, it's a story in the Talmud, once a rabbi was walking around in the market, and all of a sudden he bumped into Prophet Elijah. And Prophet Elijah is known to be the one that sees through a person, like, in a second. And he went over to him and he asked him, tell me, is anyone here in the market, from all these people walking around, is anyone here at the level that you can tell me that he has a share in the world to come? That his life has been really meaningful, he has done something that he deserves for sure, a place, a share in the world to come. And the prophet points to two people and he says, these two brothers. So he said, wow, what did they do? They look like simple people. They don't look like big rabbis. They don't look like saints. What did they do to deserve already now, so young, a share in the world to come? He goes over to them and asks them, tell me, what do you do? What is your profession? Oh, we are comedians. Comedians? Yeah, when we see two people, people around us are not happy, we try to make them smile. When we see two people arguing with a joke, with something funny, we break the stress, the tense situation, and they make peace. This is our job. We are comedians. And then you realize, you know what? To change the world, sometimes it's about bringing a smile to somebody's face. That he should see the light, the good, something good in his life. So if we talk about marriage, number one is happiness. But happiness has a special kind of glue to it. Brings people together. Brings people closer and breaks down all these barriers. And this is really what I wanted to talk to you about marriage. I know you're young, not married yet. You're thinking what's going to be, how it's going to be. How do I make sure that my marriage is going to be forever, that I'm going to find the right partner who's going to make me happy, I'm going to make him happy, and how do I make sure that our marriage is going to be different than what I've seen around, or what I've heard, or what I've read. So there's actually one simple solution. I know you know this word, this word, but I, sadly I think it has been misused, misunderstood, and really people don't get it. The word is love. So you tell me, of course we know love. No, no, trust me. What you have heard, read, is not real love. They say a story that once 
a young man went fishing and he was so excited because all of a sudden he felt a fish pulling and he picked it up and wow, a golden fish, a salmon. He said, wow, this is my lucky day. And he picks up the salmon and he says, I love fish, I love salmon. And this fish is getting all excited. He loves me, wow, what's gonna happen now? And he puts him into a bag and he starts carrying him home and he starts singing and humming and he says, I love fish, I love salmon. And this fish is already picturing, wow, I'm gonna come to his house, he's gonna build an aquarium, I'm gonna have paradise in this world. And he gets all excited and his wife opens the door and he says, you can't believe it, what a day today. I picked a salmon, but you have to look at it, I love it so much. And then already that's it, he says, an aquarium is, is small for me. He's gonna build the whole lake for me, he's gonna build the world for me, he loves me. And all of a sudden, this man takes out the knife and the fish screams out, you love me? You hate me, you love yourself. And that's the problem in today's world. People, when they say, I love you, they actually love themselves. They get married, very simple, because they want a good life. They dream, if I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna have somebody that's gonna help me, take care of me, wash the dishes, do this, do that. And actually, that's not what marriage is all about. Marriage is not about receiving, it's not about somebody loving me, it's about me loving the person I love. It's about giving to the person I love the best life possible. I'm gonna make him, her, the happiest person in the world. I'm gonna do whatever I can. I'm gonna be ready to sacrifice. When I tell young men, if you get married, you have to go out shopping. They say, wow. I say, that's what marriage is all about. Young girls, if you get married, you'll have to go to the sport game. And that's what marriage is. Marriage is about giving, about sharing, but even more about sacrificing. It's about giving to someone else something that I have because I want to make him happy. And Judaism teaches us that marriage is actually about one soul that before we were born was split into half. Half went into one spouse, part of the family, and the second half went to the other. And our goal is to bring these two halves together to bring them together again. They were together before they were born. And now our goal is to bring them together. So a person will never say, my life is about helping my left hand, that my right hand should help my left hand, my left hand should help my right hand. It's all about one. It's all about one entity. And when we feel that way, when we feel they are actually one, then it's not helping somebody else. It's about helping myself. But I'm ready to sacrifice for myself to help myself. And the world has enough for all of us. There's enough out there for each one of us to be happy. If somebody thinks, I cannot be happy if somebody else will be happy, then he has it all wrong. We don't become successful, great, we don't achieve what we want by putting somebody else down. There was once a story of two young boys, they were actually children of a great rabbi, and the youngest boy in the family was actually taller than his brother. So he always had this complex. I'm the oldest one. I'm older and I'm much shorter. And one day he had a great idea. He convinced his brother to he dig them a hole and he said, just go down to the hole for a few minutes. And his brother went into the hole and all of a sudden he screamed to his father, Daddy, look at us, I'm taller now. His brother was in the pit and he was now taller. And his father called him over and he said, if you ever want to be taller, don't put your brother in the pit. Climb a ladder, climb onto the tree, never put somebody else down to get taller. 
So this is really the secret of happiness and this is the secret of marriage. It's about giving, it's about sharing, it's about loving somebody else. If we are going to build our life by making other people happy, we're going to be even happier. The moment that the person realizes that my happiness depends on everybody else being happy. And if I'm happy, I'm going to make other people happy. And these were these two comedians were telling this rabbi. Our life is to make other people happy. It's to bring people together. It's not about myself. It's about others. Once our life is about others, then we are assured that in our life, the world is going to change. It's going to change for the better. We don't have to spread miracles. We don't have to bring new inventions. We have to smile sincerely and give others what we can. But people say, listen, life is tough. Listen, I have this test. I have this problem. I have this friendship. I have this job. I have these parents. How can I be happy? Look at what happened yesterday. Look at the news. Look at the prognosis for tomorrow. How can I be happy? And the answer is one simple world. There's a word in English that has a very deep meaning. It's something that God gives us every single second. It's the present. The past, the past is gone already. What's the point about worrying about what happened yesterday? The future, it's not here yet. We can shape it. It could change. What everybody, whatever everybody will tell you, things might be different. So don't worry about the past. Don't worry about the future. Live the present. The present is the biggest present we have. Let's live in the present. Let's smile in the present. Let's be happy in the present. Let's make the people around us happy. And then our life will be a happy one. That's what I want to wish to you. We're in the holiday season. Today is Hanukkah. It's going to be holiday celebrations in the next few weeks, vacations. I understand today is the last day of school. Wow, that's a reason to celebrate, a reason to be happy. Let's be happy. Happy is contagious. Let's make everybody else around us happy, and the world will be a happy one. Thank you.